Joining us on the Heaster Automotive Group hotline, WRLSportsFan.com, hangs out with me on Panic Rooms. It's Lauren Brownlow, that Brownlow lady. What up, Lauren? What's going on? Just same old, same old. You know. Have the Panthers dragged you back in? Okay, so <laughs> I got multiple texts about this <laughs> um, <laughs> throughout Sunday. Yeah. Um, I did a few activities Sunday that I wouldn't normally try to fit into a Sunday. And so by the time I got back to my apartment, which was around three or four, I was exhausted. Mm -hmm. um, so I just kind of like went to sleep for a bit there. So I didn't really watch the game. Um, but I did see that they were like up big on Seattle. And I was like, see, now I can't hop in. Because now I'm invested if I hop in because I hate yeah. losing to the Seahawks. Like, and the Panthers, you know, they've let me down a few times. Um, but yeah. I mean, that's I, why you're the sad Panther fan. I think what makes me happiest about it is that, you know, when, when David Tepper said about Steve Wilkes, like, oh, he'd have to do an amazing job to even get consideration basically, which is BS. You know what? He, I, I like that he's putting him in a position and could potentially, if this continues, this kind of play, mm -hmm. put him in an even more awkward position. Like at what point, what did, how many wins did Matt will have? And his, was it 11? Yeah. Over I mean, like three this, years. Yeah. And I think that the funny, my favorite stat was that the Panthers actually won a game when the other team put up 17 or more points, which is something that they never did. Yeah. They had Matt not Rule. done that under Matt rule, which is, yeah. Oh my God. No, I guess Nebraska wants to turn into Iowa. Maybe who knows? Maybe that's, yeah, maybe yeah, that's the, actually, no, no. I think that's Bill Belichick and Matt Patricia who are trying to be Iowa at this point. They're trying to out Kirk Ferentz, Kirk Ferentz. I have been uh, saying this. Things. I maintain this and it's still true. Um, although kudos to Steve Wilkes for, I think, really doing his best with the offense that he has. I mean, they're going to have mm -hmm. droughts and they're not going to score as much, but he's trying to score. Whereas, like, I think that there are so many defensive minded coaches first that just can't help themselves when it comes to offense and what kind of influence they have on the offense. I mean, Bill Belichick had no business winning games like that when he had Tom Brady. He doesn't have Tom Brady now. So now he's mm -hmm. like, ooh. We can win this way. This is fun again. This is my lifeblood. You know, right. like it's all pro. It's all process. I, I, just, I want to do this all process. He loves I don't to care win who games I am. Like six to three. Like come yeah. on. Yeah, that's real football, Lauren. That's what that is. Lauren Brownlow, WRLSportsFan.com, ACC Panic Room, hanging out with us here on the OG alongside Joe Gilio. I'm Joe Ovias. To back to your point about Steve Wilkes and what David Tepper, the owner of the Carolina Panthers, had said in relation to what Wilkes would have to do. I actually think he's met that criteria already. Um, I think by going four and four since he's taken over, they've won three out of the last four. Clearly this team has bought in, as Jillio likes to point out, something resonates with no, this they guy love and this him. team. Like, we knew that. Yeah, and, they love him. And you also put the circumstances that David Tepper put him in. This is something that Wilkes addressed after the win on Sunday where he talked about why it was such an emotional win for them to be in Seattle and find themselves a game out and in control, by the way, with games remaining against the Buccaneers and the Saints. That's the crazy part. Oh. The crazy part is if the Saints oh, no. could actually hold on to a freaking lead like last week when they were up 16-3 to against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, we'd have a four-way tie right now in the NFC South. So I think given all those circumstances... It, I, it is the coastal. It really is. It's big coastal energy. Given all the circumstances, I feel like I feel like Wilkes has done that already. He's somebody who's clearly invested and wants the job. And outside of giving up even more picks and compensation to get somebody like Sean Payton, who are you gonna get that kind of matches what Wilkes is doing right now? Well, and here's the other part of it, right? Like if if Tepper were to like go with fan slash player sentiment. And just hire Steve Wilkes. You know who's not really going to get blamed for it as much? David Tepper. If it goes wrong, yeah. Yeah. David Tepper is just going to be like, listen, I was trying to take the input of the players. You know, Smart, I can yeah. tell that, you know, and we thought he did a really good job in the time that we gave him. And we thought, hey, it's only fair to see if this, could, maybe they give him a short term deal just to be sure. Mm -hmm. Since, I mean, I would hope whoever Tepper hires, it's not too long-term a deal right off the bat. Because <laughs> uh, that's dumb. 
but yeah you know what i was gonna say like what's the point like what now you're gonna have to go around and search for a guy and do just do any of us trust david temper to do that i know i don't no, I, do I don't not. think anybody does. I don't, that, the the no. question, though, it, the, the question is, do you think this is this is something that I brought up on the air? And I think sometimes we forget this, that we're so laser focused on the Panthers not being good that we forget that other teams are not good. Right. Like we forget, you know what? The Bucks suck, too. OK, but it's, I for, think, you know what part of it that is, though, right, is that a lot of the teams we're looking at and they're not good. Not all of them. But a lot of them you look at and you're like, well, they've been good recently. I think we all Doesn't, just miss being good. I miss yeah, having well, a quarterback to watch that I was sure could influence the outcome of games. Well, that's in, in a good that way. is that <laughs> is Sam Newton. That's Sam Newton right now. Cam Darnold. Let's go. What, Lauren? What? He looked pretty good. He looked pretty good against Seattle. Come on now. Lauren Brownlow, WRLSportsFan.com. Joining us here on the OG. All right, so to tra transition off the Panthers and, and to college basketball, something that we talked about on the ACC Panic Room this past weekend when North Carolina had their get-right game. A week off, uh, an opportunity for Armando Baycott to get healthier, which is important, um, and against an opponent they should beat. I mean, it's mm -hmm. kind of similar to last year's MO where uh, Carolina, when they took on good competition, got pushed around. Uh, and when they took on comparable competition or worse, they could do their thing. And that that's that would be my curiosity going forward eventually when they get back into ACC play. Clearly, Hubert Davis, the head coach of the, of the Tar Heels, wanted to get through Armando Baycott again. They wanted the offense, rather than jacking up threes, which hasn't exactly been successful, they wanted to get things going through Armando again. And it worked. But the question that I got is, is that a matter of doing it against Georgia Tech, or is this something they're going to truly stick with going forward uh, and that's going to be their new identity because I could argue they have had no identity so far this season. Yeah, I mean, I could argue that. I mean, obviously that's going to be helpful. But to me, the more helpful thing was just how much different their ball movement was, you know, yeah. in that there was some. And, <laughs> you know, I think that to me is the biggest change that they have to keep consistent. I mean, there was just so much one-on-one -on -one basketball earlier in the season, and it seemed – difficult for them to get shots in the half court even though sometimes you know sometimes Caleb Love will, has been known to knock in a long two or a three at the end of a shot clock like RJ Davis loves that step back kind of near the three-point line shot mm. um the long the long twos you know we've talked about this you kind of have to ride or die with your guard play and sometimes they're going to take shots like that but you know what we've seen them make those shots more often than not that you just kind of have to shrug your shoulders when they don't go in the problem is there's no ball movement to get them there there are no easy shots See, that was what was going on earlier in the season is like the shot clock would be winding down and it'd be like okay let's put the ball in this guy's hands and have him try to go make a play when ideally mm. you'd love to move the ball around fast enough that you get somebody a really good look and you just didn't see that happening a lot through the first you know however many games of the season so to me that was a big thing because i personally hadn't seen them move the ball like that all year uh, probably I would have to go back to last year's NCAA tournament, quite frankly, to the last probably, time I saw yeah. them move it that well. So that to me was the big takeaway. And I think that's something they have to keep up because like, I know those guys like to go one on one from time to time. There's nothing wrong with that. And sometimes they can have success, but the success they were having a lot last year, I think was contingent upon that kind of ball movement and getting everybody like the best available opportunity to score. I also think that, at some point, though, you talk about ball movement. I'm totally with you on that. But they also still need people to make shots. That That's the other sure. thing, too. And I think as we get further away from it, um, we we have, we have stand in awe of what Brady Manick was able to consistently Listen, do. Listen, he was so important to them. Okay. Like, and, yeah. and they just don't have that production, and I don't see where that production is going to come from. That's not Pete Nance, okay? Uh, Caleb Love shouldn't be jacking up a bunch of shots in a game. That's not a recipe for success for the Tar Heels. So it might just have to be a thing where that's out of the equation, and it gets back to what you're talking about, more ball movement and getting just, Armando Baycott the ball. Just like because that's the thing. You do have to make shots, but, you know, you're not going to get as good a looks off of no ball movement offense like you're gonna have somebody up on you you're gonna have to take a step back and take like an awkward long three or whatever it is like you have to be able 
to kind of like get people better shots. And the way you do that is through ball movement. I mean, I know I sound like Captain. I sound like the guy who says like, use your, use your, bend your knees on the free throw. I always look at that guy like. Hey, look, look, you know what? Roy Williams would always start a press conference saying, you know, games, game looks, game's a lot better when the, when the ball's going through the basket or whatever it was that he would say, you know? Uh, it's like, these you are, don't think they, they, those guys have thought of bending their knees on a free throw? You think they're going to just forget? Yeah, probably. It's probably the case. Anyway, Lauren wow. Brownlow, WRLSportsFan.com, ACC Panic Room. Thanks, Lauren. I'll talk to you next week. All right.